Welcome back and thank you guys for joining me again. Today we are talking about that, the gourd dipper plant. It's taken over my garden in a huge way. I knew it was going to be a lot, but I don't think I was ready. It doesn't even want me to get in there anymore. Within the course of like a day or two, it's completely taken over my gate. I can't even see the other side of it. And this thing is putting on some serious fruits. There's a small one. Got two great big ones up front and there's several larger ones down underneath, but we're gonna have to get inside this thing to get a look at it. Look at this thing, oh my God. That is absolutely insane. I had said that I wanted it to like fill this greenhouse frame, but I just, I wasn't ready guys. I had no idea what a couple little seeds could do. But look at this. I knew it was going along our fence over there but I had no idea that it had latched on to what's left of our corn and has worked its way all the way over here. That is insane. That's quite the travel for this guy. I mean, we're talking about 15 feet there. So I'm just gonna kinda tuck that in away from the tomatoes. The tomatoes are still doing okay. They really need some weeding. Still several hanging in there. Um, thinking we'll probably do some fried green tomatoes soon. It's getting to be that time. But it is not the only thing. The entire garden is just nuts right now this time of year. This is the marigold that I planted a couple videos back. It's really not even been that long. And I mean, you can use my hand for comparison, but when I planted it, it was a little tiny pot. And look at this. I mean, the circumference of this. This is all marigold. It's completely taken over this bed along with my nasturtiums. These nasturtiums have taken over like a three by three foot square. Ugh. Hi. Ah, uh, my neighbor just started mowing. We gotta get a piece of property. It's getting pretty loud. We're gonna take a little break. Um, we'll be back in just a minute. It's a small yard. They won't take long. All right, they've at least moved to the front yard for now. I got some weeds pulled, but we're gonna continue. I wanna get inside this thing and see just how many gourds we're gonna have. The only downside is that once we actually pick them, which is still a good ways off, it's gonna be like six months or so while they dry before we can actually do anything with them. So this is definitely part one of this video. Let's see if I can't just burrow in there. of this thing. This was actually the very first one to develop, but because they're getting so heavy, there was like a huge collapse, and now this guy is sitting on the ground, so we're just going to kind of gently twist him up and set him in this basket behind us. We can't cut these until the stems start turning brown where they're connected. Are they weed whacking?
All right, I just heard the weed whacker die. I think we're good. So while I'm in here, I thought I would expand your mind with a few facts. We've been trying to squeeze in as much information as we can on our garden videos because there's just so much to know. But a week or so ago, we talked about sunflowers and how they dated back before bean and corns. A lot of scholars believe that they were one of the earliest cultivated plants, not only for food, but also for bird food and things like that. But the gourd dipper and the bottle gourd actually has it beat by thousands of years. They date back 12 to 13,000 years, whereas the sunflower only goes back to about 6,000 years. So that's pretty friggin' impressive. These were the earliest cups, spoon, bowls, ways to transport and store water, jerky, nuts, whatever you have to keep throughout the winter. These were your go-to. So this dipper gourd is actually one of the closest related cousins to the bottle gourd, which is the earliest form of gourd. So it's the very first one. It's the mac daddy of them all. Everything gourd-wise from then on down has been messed with by people because we screw with everything. And while they are related to cucumbers, melons, and squash, there's a few differences. These guys have a really hard shell, and when you dry them for six months, you can hollow them out. Squash, however, like pumpkins, is a little bit softer, it has more fruit inside, and it's more something that you would grow to eat, not to store things. They even make maracas. These guys actually came before clay pots and were some of the earliest drinking straws. And looking at them, probably some other things. But one of the favorite things to do with these guys, even up to five, 6,000 years ago, is make birdhouses. You might be asking yourself, why would indigenous tribes want to make birdhouses? What good could that possibly do them? It draws birds in, it eats their crops, things like that, right? But they figured out that purple martins were voracious fly, wasp, and mosquito eaters. Purple martins are those little guys that you see dip diving over ponds like crazy just at dusk. And they love living in things like this. You hollow it out, you put a little hole in it, put it up really, really high where there's not a whole lot of trees around because purple martins like to sit in their nest and really survey a broad area. And they will take care of a lot of your mosquito problems. And there you go, within the span of a few minutes, you know way more about dipper gourds than you probably ever wanted to. But thank you guys for joining me. They gave me an excuse to crawl back in here. Always a good thing to hang out in a natural made plant house. Huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon as well. You guys have been keeping the sprinkler going for me. Man, we've had one day of rain in about three weeks. Now take your gourd facts and go be the weirdest person in the room.